Mr Tuberty and his agent were paid out for services that weren't provided, essentially. Um, Mr Tuberty has said that if asked, he will pay back that €150,000 uh, to RTE. When previously challenged in, in terms of why RTE paid out those payments, they said it was based on, on, on legal advice. Can I ask now, what is the, 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 the position um, of RTE? Has RTE asked Mr Tuberty and his agent to repay uh, that €150,000 uh, that, 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 that was paid out for these notional um, gigs that, that were not uh, provided. So has Mr Tuberty, he has said he will pay that money back if asked. Has he been asked to pay that money back? No, no we haven't. And okay. the reason, Why not? Thank you. Reason, can I explain, Chair? Briefly. Yeah, the reason we haven't is because there was a verbal agreement given to the agent that RTE would, uh, would pay the money if there was no sponsorship in place. And to be clear, that is acknowledged by the agent in Grand Thornton, even though I note yesterday, uh, the day before yesterday, the agent said if there was no sponsorship agreement, well, it, it, and I, I, I have the, the quote, no money would be paid. It's completely obvious to me, reading Grant Thornton and the correspondence, that the agent knew RT would be paying. RT should never have paid the two invoices. Mr. Right, just briefly, we should have declared it. Um, because Mr. Kelly said he never met D Forbes alone. Um, I went back and looked, had any meetings occurred between Mr. Kelly and D Forbes at any point alone without legal and finance. There was a meeting on Monday, April the 25th, 2022 at 12.45, a team's call. Attendees, Noel Kelly and D Forbes. If you remember in the chronology that we have supplied, in January, February and March of 2022, Mr Kelly came looking for the money that his client was contractually uh, absolutely, we, we, were, we RT were obligated because of this underwriting to provide that money. Um, on that date, we knew the Renault agreement, as you've all seen, uh, and the key thing that struck me when I saw it for the first time two weeks ago was that the Renault agreement is for a year and a quarter. Geraldine O'Leary in her testimony has been very clear about the fact there was no Renault deal after the first year. There were no other six events. And in that situation, uh, Mr. Kelly then wrote Sorry, that no, day, to, just, I'm just going to give you one final thing, members. to Ms. Forbes on April the 25th at 16.18, an email copied to nobody from Mr. Kelly to Ms. Forbes to say, hi Dee, I hope you are well. It was good to catch up today. If you could please get Ger, Geraldine O'Leary, to send me on the invoicing details. The contract said one year as well. I read it very yeah. carefully. Thank you, Chair. But just it does say this is uh, we discussed it internally, and below is our is our final response, final position. So it says, I just think it's significant. Do we have a, a full record of who attended all of those uh, meetings that are, are referred to. No. no so, for don't. example, that email of the 20th of February refers to a meeting. There's no note of that meeting, and I don't have clarity as to who was at that So meeting. we don't know who was at it. No. Uh, there was no minutes taken no. um, that we, we, we know of. The emails um, clearly show that there was intent uh, to issue a, a, a side letter um, underwriting um, these payments and, and, and guaranteeing them. The, the, the revelation of, of these emails, the, the, the people um, that are CC'd in it, um, D Forbes, uh, Jim Jennings, uh, Reid O'Keefe, um, refer to the meetings who we have no knowledge who attended those, those, those meetings, that the attempt to portray this as, as some sort of, um, you know, situation where people were operating in silos, that, you know, nobody bar one had, had all of the information. That is now certainly not the case. Would I be correct in saying that, Mr Backhurst? No, I'm afraid I don't agree with you, Deputy. I do think people are operating in silos. I think some people knew some information. Um, I'm not convinced anyone else knew all the information. Key people in key roles at the top of the organisation knew that this mechanism that was contrived uh, to deceive and to conceal payments show that they, those, those key people were not operating in silo. Um, they were operating in collaboration in, in, in relation uh, to this deal. When these payments were made, because they were, it was a legal obligation in RT to make the payments, we should have declared them. And we have put our hands up in terms of that, how we've compiled the figures and published the figures. RTE published inaccurate information about its top earner. 
and we were given inaccurate information in relation to who knew and who didn't know. And that's, that's clear as mud. And from a lot of what we've witnessed over the last number of weeks, personally, I wouldn't be very confident moving forward unless there's serious changes because transparency and our accountability is what the public want. And for, even from this conversation here now, I um, do not see that I, we've got accountability. I have just showed emails, repeated what was said at the last meeting, and the response is as weak as be damned. Now, and just in relation to, I wanted to talk about consequences. As I said, so I know the clock's ticking. Consequences, and you know, I think if the people of Ireland hear the after the scandal or, you know, something, lack of corporate governance, and if they hear lessons have been learned once more, I think you'll hear uh, them all scream in unison with frustration, right? So what people want to see is what the consequences will be. Now, in relation to the executive boards that are either have resigned, you know, jump ship, or the ones that have been stepped aside, and what we've we've heard over the last number of weeks, you know, they're going to be heading into the sunset with their exit packages. Would there be a case where in many of those um, executive board members where there could be a bonus due but hasn't yet been paid? No. No. Well, when it comes back to consequences, what consequences will those people face? And I'm talking about people that raised false invoices, people that engaged in a separate commercial deal and underwrit that separate commercial deal, which they had absolutely no business doing, that cost the public purse a substantial amount of money, that concealed those payments through a barter account that went to Asdus and then to another CMS account, and the whole thing designed, as the chair said, uh, designed to deceive. What consequences will there be other than those people saying, or being told, you need to step aside but you go off with your pension. Where's the consequences? Because people are sick of the lack of accountability in corporate governance in this state. And once and for all, people want to see consequences, not a slap on the wrist and go off with your pension. Deputy, there have been consequences. Half of the executive team have, have uh, been stood down or left the organisation. So that is a consequences, that is accountability. And other members of the, of the executive board that have been taken off the executive board. I'm oh, sorry, who are you, who are you Well, referring? if we yeah. talk about, mm. say, Mr Collins yes. there. Yes, yeah, Mr Collins is still on. He's, he's here today and I'm pleased he's coming along today and he's, he's working with us very closely. But absolutely. Mr Collins, in fairness, knew absolutely nothing. He was oblivious to all of this going on. And just, you know, when you look back... Same deputy. Yeah. When you look back, he had um, said previously when we were questioning about the payments, he had said um, that he wouldn't have known about it because um, he wouldn't have known, and the reason he wouldn't have known it was either concealed or hidden. But then when I said, well, the person that processed those invoices and raised those false invoices is sitting beside you, which was the commercial director, Mr Collins then responded to me and said, she's not obliged to report to me. So where's the oversight? Where's the where's the oversight between the commercial and Deputy, the, the barter you know, accounts and the public uh, funds? You're 100%. It's you're, it is madness. You're 100% correct about this. 